This hour of HQ presented by Penske. When you gain the right transportation partner, your business gains ground. We have three ranked teams in action tonight as we kick off week one in college football. Best game involving a ranked team is probably the backyard brawl. Pittsburgh seven and a half point favorites against West Virginia. Penn State is at Purdue. Those teams unranked, but could be ranked very soon. In fact, the winner of that game might be ranked very shortly. Our Brady Quinn is on the coverage for that game, but we want to focus on the ranked teams right now. Brady, let's start with the backyard brawl and a couple of former USC quarterbacks going at it tonight. Two guys who were on the same team a couple of years ago. Yeah, pretty crazy when you think about how the transfer portal has completely changed the makeup of college football and allowed for a matchup like this to take place. And honestly, probably bring some parity along with it. You know, I don't know that, that Pitt or West Virginia would be in the place they are today for this matchup without the transfer portal. And two quarterbacks who have experience and showcase the ability to play at a high level. So that's going to be the storyline going into the game. But guys, I think you look at Pitt as Keaton Slovis tries to replace the record setting Kenny Pickett from a year ago. You know, they lost a lot on the outside of wide receiver and tight end. They do have a lot of offensive linemen returning. And I think they're going to hang their hat on the rushing attack. I'm really trying to play sound defense. Eight returning starters on defense, too, and rely on that group, not put too much on Keaton Slovis' shoulders. But I can tell you this much from folks I talked to inside that program, they are extremely excited about Keaton Slovis and his accuracy and experience, and they really got high aspirations this year. On the other side, though, for this matchup, I mean, JT Daniels was one of the most talented quarterbacks coming into college football when he originally arrived in Southern California. Now, he's made his way through Athens, Georgia, and now to Morgantown. But that doesn't change the fact that he can air it out. They've got a big play wide receiver in Sam James, who will make some plays in this one to be tough to cover. And don't forget about Jalen Dixon, former Clemson running back. He's transferred to West Virginia. They've got some firepower on offense. So, I look, it's the backyard brawl. This thing's going to stay close. I like West Virginia to stay within the number of seven and a half. Okay. Uh, there was an interesting soundbite earlier this week. I love it when players embrace rivalries, even if they didn't grow up with that specific rivalry. Take a listen to what Keaton Slovis had to say. And I got one more thing to say. West Virginia. <laughs> I'm guessing you never said anything like that on the mic as a Notre Dame quarterback, maybe about USC or anything like that. No, no, we try to keep it classy. Um, <laughs> however, I have come into my run-in with other Pitt quarterbacks. I think you can Google search Tyler Palco maybe after a win one time. They got one in our stadium saying some things. So we made sure that, that next time we went to Heinz Field, we took care of business that following year and tried to ruin their little coming out party. Something about Pitt quarterbacks, I guess. So are you like uh, who tonight? West Virginia to keep it within the number? West Virginia. Yeah. Okay. If you were listening earlier, Chris, West Virginia is seven half points. I'll take it. Okay. Let's move on to the highest ranked team in action tonight. That's number 12, Oklahoma State. Coming off a Fiesta Bowl win over Notre Dame and a 12-win season. Brady, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like we haven't talked that much about Oklahoma State. Spencer Sanders returns flying a little bit under the radar after that good year last year i think for a couple of reasons i mean one you know th there's some pieces that moved on to the nfl from defense they're four top leading tacklers they're gone they gotta replace those guys they were the best defense in the big 12 i think you could make the case they're more defensive led than offensively led i mean spencer sanders had his moments but a little inconsistent at times so uh, obviously his veteran leadership is huge coming back um you know but they're still going to run the football and, and i think they're going to try to rely on the pieces that are remaining in the field, like a defense that lost uh, Jim Knowles uh, to Ohio State Buckeyes, but you bring in Derek Mason to replace him. So, I look, Oklahoma State's one of those teams I think we look at and think they could be a Big 12 sleeper. I'm not sure much more than that. In this matchup, though, they're going to be tested. Lou Nichols led the nation in rushing last, um, last year for Western, or, excuse me, Central Michigan. Uh, and, and, and look, we've seen Central Michigan go in there before and get a win in Stillwater. If you recall, the Cooper Rush Hail Mary that all of a sudden is ingrained in the back of our minds by how that whole thing worked out. So uh, to me, this spread is way too big. And I'll go ahead and say for an Oklahoma State team that tends to get off to a slow start, we saw it last year versus Missouri State. I think they could here too versus Central Michigan. So I'm going to go ahead and take the points at Central Michigan here. That was such a wild game six years ago, 2016. Oklahoma State should have won the game. I mean, they had the better team, yes. But no, they should have won the game. There was a blown call at the end which allowed – Central Michigan won untimed down at the one end of the game. Point. They they needed a Hail Mary and then some. It was a Hail Mary and then a lateral right. and then a touchdown well, to win that game. And and Chris, I'm not sure if you know this, but you know, I, I've been a part of some games where there was a blown call or missed call that led to your demise. <laughs> um you, you 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 mean all you can do is complain about it now, right? 
the only thing anyone remembers is this right here in Central Michigan, putting the ball across the goal line to get the win in the final moment. So, um, you know, you can make the case whatever you want, but I'm telling you right now, as someone who's experienced it firsthand, no one's going to feel bad for you. Brady, reminiscing time and time again about uh, some hardships at Notre Dame throughout his career. You like Central Michigan to cover that number and the under in this game. One more ranked game, and this one should not be close at all. It's number 22 Wake Forest against VMI. And most fans wondering, you know, what is this Wake team going to be without Sam Hartman for the time being? It's not going to matter tonight, right? But Hartman, by all accounts, is working his way back with that non-football medical issue. Yeah, but, you know, tonight it's going to be Mitch Griffiths who's taken over. You know, he's only got 15 uh, career pass attempts, so obviously very green. But Dave Clawson's done a tremendous job of building out around the quarterback position. you got four or five returning offensive linemen, so that group should be able to help protect him. Then we look at the wide receiver position. Jaquari uh, Roberson leaves uh, after a very uh, big year last year, but you get A.T. Perry back, who almost had 1,300 yards receiving and 15 scores. And along with that, uh, Taylor Morin, as well as Keyshawn Williams, will also be there uh, to help kind of fill that void offensively speaking. So uh, Wake Forest shouldn't have any points uh, problem putting up points in this game. I think they cover this spread. The real question is how improved this defense has become because they were awful last year. Uh, but obviously that's, that's been a point of contention, I think, for Dave Kloss this entire offseason. But they should be fine in this matchup versus VMI. All right, Brady likes Wake minus 31 and a half, also the under. And uh, for a point of reference, VMI only played one FBS team last season. It was Kent State, and they lost by 50. So Wake should, should have uh, no problem tonight. Brady Quinn, uh, we're getting ready for Purdue and Penn State tonight. West Lafayette, Indiana. Here are his picks for the ranked games tonight. He's going under on all these. He likes West Virginia to cover the 7.5 against Pittsburgh, Central Michigan to cover the 21.5 at Oklahoma State, and Wake Forest to cover the 31.5, minus 31.5 at home against VMI. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.